not impossible. That mindset has fueled SpaceX's groundbreaking innovations like landing a rocket booster on a drone ship. But so far, this method has only been used with Falcon 9, not Falcon Heavy. Now, SpaceX is aiming even higher, landing two Falcon Heavy boosters on drone ships. It's an ambitious goal that could redefine what's possible in spaceflight. Why is SpaceX exploring this bold strategy, and how promising is it for the future? Let's dive into the answers in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Landing a rocket booster on a drone ship is one of SpaceX's most revolutionary innovations. This method has enabled rapid reuse of Falcon 9 boosters, slashing launch costs, and maximizing hardware recovery. However, Falcon Heavy, a much more complex system, has yet to use this technique for its side boosters. While those boosters have consistently landed successfully at SpaceX's land-based landing zones, they've never touched down on drone ships. That could be changing soon. Falcon Heavy comprises three boosters, a central core, and two side boosters. The side boosters are usually recovered and reused, but always return to land. The central core, which travels farther and endures more extreme re-entry conditions, is rarely recovered. Due to its demanding flight profile, attempts to land the core on a drone ship have often failed or been excluded entirely from mission plans. So why don't the side boosters land on drone ships? The answer lies in resource management. Falcon Heavy missions would require both of SpaceX's East Coast drone ships just to recover the side boosters, temporarily sidelining them from Falcon 9 missions. Given SpaceX's high launch cadence, this creates a scheduling bottleneck. Using both drone ships for a single Falcon Heavy flight restricts the company's overall mission flexibility. Despite this, the idea of recovering side boosters on drone ships is an enticing one. It would allow for more versatile launch profiles and free up land-based landing zones for other operations. Recently, an internal SpaceX concept image surfaced showing both Falcon Heavy side boosters landing on a single drone ship, a daring proposal that could significantly improve recovery logistics. John Edwards, SpaceX's VP of Falcon and Dragon programs, confirmed the idea is under active consideration, particularly for missions requiring downrange landings. This isn't just conceptual art, it's a serious engineering possibility. Still, the challenges are considerable. As Edwards put it, there's definitely a much higher likelihood of losing a side booster or two and damaging the drone ship. Landing one booster on a moving platform is already difficult. Landing two, either simultaneously or sequentially, is far more complex. Several technical issues arise. One is physical space. The boosters must land far enough apart to avoid collision, but close enough to fit on the deck. Another is interference from engine thrust. Each booster ignites a Merlin 1D engine during landing, producing roughly 190,000 pounds of thrust. That exhaust plume could destabilize another booster nearby. Timing is also crucial. If the landings are staggered, the second booster must remain airborne longer, increasing fuel demands and flight control complexity. If not managed carefully, the second landing could disrupt the first, especially if its exhaust affects the platform or the landed booster. Weather and sea states introduce even more unpredictability. With two heavy boosters on deck, the drone ship becomes more sensitive to wave motion and wind, potentially compromising post-landing stability. All these factors add risk to an already daring maneuver, but if any company is prepared to attempt such a feat, it's SpaceX. The company has redefined aerospace norms repeatedly, landing boosters vertically, recovering boosters at sea, and most recently catching the massive super heavy booster with its Mechazilla arms. Landing two Falcon boosters on a single drone ship could be the next major milestone. Extensive upgrades will be necessary before this becomes a reality. SpaceX would need to reinforce its drone ships to withstand the shock and weight of dual landings. Navigation and control systems will have to be refined for tighter tolerances and real-time coordination. 
New simulations and flight models would help SpaceX fine-tune descent profiles, taking into account interference effects and platform dynamics. These upgrades will take time, but SpaceX has time to spare. According to Edwards, no upcoming missions currently require this capability, giving the company breathing room to develop and test the system at their own pace. If successful, the benefits will be substantial. First, it would allow SpaceX to recover both side boosters using a single drone ship, freeing the other for potential use with the Falcon Heavy core stage. Full recovery of all three boosters would mark a major step forward in rocket reusability. Right now, Falcon Heavy's sensor cores are often lost. With the second drone ship available, the chances of recovering the central core improve dramatically. Second, this would help SpaceX alleviate launch scheduling conflicts. Both East Coast drone ships are often in high demand for Falcon 9 recoveries. By consolidating Falcon Heavy's side booster landings on one drone ship, SpaceX can maintain a steadier cadence of launches from Cape Canaveral, especially from Launch Complex 40. As Edwards noted, while using one drone ship per booster is the smarter short-term move, it limits overall flexibility. A dual landing strategy could unlock more frequent flights without compromising booster recovery. Third, there are economic advantages. Falcon Heavy missions currently cost around $150 million, Reducing refurbishment and replacement costs by recovering all three boosters could push that figure down, making the rocket more competitive against rivals like Blue Origin's New Glenn or ULA's Vulcan. For missions with heavy payloads or unique orbits where Falcon Heavy excels, the ability to fully reuse hardware would give SpaceX a critical cost edge. And it's not just Falcon Heavy that could benefit. As launch volumes increases, SpaceX might face scenarios where two Falcon 9 missions launch in close succession and both require ocean landings. A single drone ship capable of recovering two boosters could make those missions easier to coordinate, especially if the second drone ship is unavailable or undergoing maintenance. This capability would also dovetail with Starlink deployment plans. As SpaceX launches more satellites for its broadband constellation, it'll need to turn boosters around quickly. Recovery innovations that reduce drone ship downtime and streamline logistics will be crucial for meeting ambitious rollout goals. Still, it's important to note that while promising, this concept is far from routine. The dual landing approach poses real risks, including the potential loss of hardware and recovery platforms. SpaceX's willingness to, to consider the idea anyway reflects its broader philosophy, take calculated risks to drive meaningful progress. In the past, such thinking led to dramatic milestones, like the first booster landings and full mission reusability. This could be the next leap forward. Ultimately, landing two Falcon boosters on a single drone ship is more than a technical challenge. It's a bold step toward more efficient, scalable spaceflight. With no immediate deadlines and a proven track record of solving hard problems, SpaceX is well positioned to take its time and get it right. And if successful, the impact will be felt not just within the company, but across the entire space industry. As we look toward a future filled with ever more ambitious missions, from lunar landings to Mars colonization, efficient booster recovery will be essential, and if the day comes when two Falcon boosters descend together onto a single floating deck in the Atlantic, it won't just be a remarkable visual, it'll be a testament to the relentless pursuit of progress. Are you ready to see it happen? If you're excited about what lies ahead, give this story a thumbs up, subscribe, and stay tuned as SpaceX continues pushing the boundaries of what's possible in spaceflight. With that all said, Falcon Heavy's ongoing upgrades are steadily enhancing the power and potential of SpaceX's most capable operational rocket. While it has flown only 11 times since its debut in 2018, each mission has demonstrated outstanding performance and growing strategic importance. Who could forget its unforgettable first flight, the iconic moment when it launched a Tesla Roadster piloted by Starman into orbit? That spectacle marked not just a marketing triumph, but also a bold statement of engineering confidence. 
Beyond the headlines, Falcon Heavy has delivered on a wide range of high-value missions. It has launched critical payloads for the U.S. military, delivered massive commercial satellites into geostationary orbits, and sent scientific missions on deep space journeys, including NASA's Psyche spacecraft, which is en route to a metal-rich asteroid and a future mission to Jupiter's moon, Europa. Every launch so far has been successful, establishing Falcon Heavy as one of the most most reliable heavy lift rockets in service. Looking ahead, Falcon Heavy's role will only grow more significant. Later this year, it'll begin contributing to lunar explorations as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. In partnership with Astrobotic, Falcon Heavy will launch the Griffin Lander to the moon's south pole. This mission, known as Griffin-1, will carry the Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or Viper for short, a key part of NASA's efforts to study lunar water ice. A second mission, Griffin-2, is already scheduled for 2026, continuing Falcon Heavy's contribution to America. America's return to the moon and paving the way for Artemis 3, the crewed landing planned for 2027. Falcon Heavy also plays a major role in national security. Under the U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch Phase 2 contract, it is slated to conduct seven missions through 2027, launching payloads for both the USSF and the National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO for short. These missions are critical to national defense and satellite infrastructure, highlighting SpaceX's growing role as a trusted launch provider for the U.S. government. Looking further ahead, Falcon Heavy is expected to support additional missions under Phase 3 of the NSSL program. While Falcon 9 and Starship will also play roles, Falcon Heavy's track record ensures its continued relevance. Beyond military and lunar missions, Falcon Heavy is also lined up for several other key NASA projects. These include the launches of the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, Dragonfly, a rotorcraft mission to Titan, Dragon XL, a cargo vehicle for the Lunar Gateway, and the Gateway's Power and Propulsion Element, or PPE, and Halo Module, though the latter may be reassigned or delayed. As launch rates rise, SpaceX will need to explore landing multiple boosters on a single drone ship. It's a complex challenge requiring upgrades and testing, but the potential benefits for Falcon Heavy and overall reusability are significant. With several missions ahead, we may see this attempted within a year or two. Which mission do you think will be the first? Drop your prediction in the comments down below. Otherwise, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Remember, we are so close to 200k subscribers. So with that, Please continue supporting us, and thank you so much for tuning in, but always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.